After this track, homies gon' try to rob me now But it's violence the key, it's violence the problem You solve to cause problems in me And is it true that you'd rather hold a gun? Is it true? And is it true that you'd rather shoot for fun? Is it true? Get it through your mind, next gun that you hold Put it down and walk away cause Frustration is growing tonight about the increase in crime in parts of New York City. Tonight, following an explosion of violence, 12 shootings in just two days in New York City. Crime scene after crime scene after crime scene. A frantic search. An officer shot in the line of duty. I heard the shot. It was just crazy out there. This teenager was shot three times in the abdomen and one time in the head. Police say there is an ongoing gang issue in this neighborhood. But there are some troublesome categories, such as homicide. We're seeing a 19.5% spike in that category, and that is very troublesome. When I was younger, I used to feel some type of way if I would have heard about somebody getting shot. But like, as I grew up, and it happened so much times as me, like, as growing up, it's just like, whenever I hear about people getting shot now, it's just like, dang. I'm sorry that happened to him or her. Like, it's nothing else I could do. That person still got shot. I live in a neighborhood where gun violence occurs a lot, and I feel like, now that I'm older, it's normal what happens almost every day. You read the news, gun violence. On the newspaper, gun violence. You go to school, gun violence. Gun violence can happen anywhere at any time, so you never know. A lot of people get shot, it, it has changed me because you never know who who's gonna get shot. Sometimes it could be a friend that you just seen yesterday and the next day you turn around and he, he just got shot or she just got shot. I mean, it changed me to like, I don't know, like not care a little bit. When you grow up on Ocean Avenue, you hear a lot of gunshots, so you just, you just numb towards it. You don't have no type of emotion, you don't feel no type of weight because you're thinking, oh, I don't know that person, so why should it matter towards me? I currently live in a neighborhood where gun violence occur a lot, and it makes me feel like, I don't know, it makes me feel... It's normal, like I've been, I've been around so much, it's normal. The feeling of numbness is definitely a defense mechanism to block out the emotions of feeling sad or or help, helpless. I was playing a pickup game with my friends and we heard, pow, and whatever, like, so we all looked up, you like, we expect the firecrackers or whatever, fireworks. But then we thought about it, like, why, why would it be fireworks? Two seconds later, you had, pow, 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 pow. We all just start running. Like, Dropped everything and just started running towards the end of the park. As the shit, like, we waited about five minutes, we, went, we ran inside the building, we heard the, the, shots, the, the shots had stopped. We went back outside and we saw that some girl got hit, whatever, by the other in the park, and we didn't run out of it, we ran out of it, two entrances. We went over there to see it, and it was, a, it was a little girl I know, whatever. She was in my, we was in the same grade, same class, whatever. But, yeah, that, that had to be my first experience, that's something I won't really forget. I lost my mother two years ago when he got shot. Some of the emotions I felt when I lost my brother was um, hurt, loss, shock. Um, I was confused, very confused. Um, in denial. I'm an only child now. The most recent trauma that occurred in my life was when my friend got shot right before Thanksgiving and it impacted me a lot. It hurt it. I went to the funeral, I had to go show respect and stuff like that. And it hurt seeing my friend laying in the casket and the life was gone. My brother was killed in 2004. He was taken from us. Um, someone came to his home and shot him dead. And they felt that whatever he had in his home was theirs. So they just came in, shot him, killed him, and left the home. Still to this day, we don't know who killed him. So I'm just here to let you know and just be a reminder that guns hurt, guns hurt families, it breaks apart families, and it's senseless, it's tragic, and we don't need that type of violence here in Crown Heights. My son, Benny A. Lott, was shot a door away from home September 2nd, 2005, approximately 9.35 p.m. How do I remember? It's a day that I will never forget. He was shot in the back of the head execution style. It was my son, Benny A. Lye, who was laying out on the ground. 
uh, face up, his back, his head down to the ground, and a puddle of blood. Um, I cried out to Jehovah God. Um, I said, Jehovah God, please don't let the evildoers take my son away. Please don't let the evildoers take my son away. And I ran in the house and I got my phone. I told some people, look over my son. And I got my phone and I called like ambulance. And I prayed, Benny, get up, get up. Please don't let the evildoers take my son. Benny, you're strong. Get up, get up. But he didn't get up. It changed my life forever because Benny was a productive young man in society. He wouldn't allow the streets to change who he was or what, what he had the ability to be. He kept his focus and so he was a great role model for, for his brother and his sisters. And so with my son being shot down a doorway from home and wasn't into anything negative, no drugs, no gains, no anything, it took it took the went out of my family. It took the ability of we can do anything to what are we doing this for. The reason why I think it's so much gun violence right now, for one, I believe New York City and New York State have one of the weakest gun laws there are. Young kids glorify these guns. Most of them get it from the, from the games, you know, Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that. But it's become a part of our culture for the young kids that they think that picking up guns make them tough and make them a man it's like they they, they getting a the name from the gun so it's, it's it's a stereotype that they figure if they carry a gun it makes them look tough i feel that music has a very big impact on people in today's society because i feel that like some of the music that's coming out with these artists and they have guns inside of their hand and everything like they drillers and then you see people that listen to that music and then they want to be drillers and some of them it's not built for that life but just off of the music video they feel because they have it and they're drillers that they can be drillers also that they have a gun. I think there's so much gun violence because there's a lot of socioeconomic issues. There are a lot of um, issues with regards to unemployment. There are issues with mental health challenges that exist out here based on, you know, history of, 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 of individuals being set upon by those which we call the have and have nots. Unfortunately, there is just a lot of um, problems dealing with um, people having the ability to get jobs. The education system is failing out people, so there's a lot of variables that come into play. Guns are not the answer. Just speak. Speak out your problems. Speak out your feelings. Whatever is needed. You know, don't take hostility out against your neighbors. Love your neighbors. I feel like people won't have problems with each other. Don't resort to guns. Like, that's their first source of action. Nobody wants to talk it out anymore. Everybody like, yo, I'm not trying to deal with it. Shoot first. Deal with the consequences if I have to. If not, then I'm good. I feel like people should just fight it out. It's a, if anything, the most you should do is fight it out. I feel like talking should be first. You can't come to an agreement. Fight it out. No weapons, no... Get it on for like, get it on for how long y'all gonna fight and let it be done after that. How could you change the situation, you Like, people people got their own mindset. People gonna do whatever they wanna do regardless. Like, regardless if you rally, um, try to ban guns and all that, people gonna still get their hands on guns and, like, there's still gonna be violence in the world regardless. I don't think we can stop gun violence, but I feel like the access of guns should be limited. I don't think anybody can stop gun violence. Like, no matter how hard people try to clean up guns off the street, try to stop people from using them somehow, like, the numbers either just increase or, like, the deaths just increase from gun violence and guns. And I don't, I think it just can't be stopped. This is collectively our community. And if it's our community, do we want to continue to tear it down? And the harsh reality is that people treat us like we treat ourselves. Well, gun violence to the community, it destroys the community. Not only does it destroy the community, it destroys lives forever. We live in a society right now where a lot of people are apathetic. They don't want to get involved. They have a reason, oh, I'm not going to snitch. But when you have people walking around carrying guns, guns don't kill people, people kill people. But guns have destroyed so many young people's lives 
forever in the parents, as parents, we never live that down every day. It's brought to our attention and, and, and it stays there. I got involved in community advocacy work in this cause based on my commitment as a youth and also working in government. And I saw that there was a niche that needed to be filled. There are a lot of people out here who just haven't taken the time out to say that they care. So I wanted to step up. The village needs help and I wanted to be one of those leaders in the village that made some noise to get the help that it needs. Hi, my name is Monique Waterman, founder of East Southwest Village. And we do a lot of programs for youth that's at risk, of course, with um, with GMAC, our provider right here with the crisis management system. And part of our job is violence interrupted on a different level in schools where we have part of our curriculum is helping with funerals, uh, making sure GMAC is there to make sure you interrupt any violence so stuff like this would not happen. And having kids deal with that mentally and the trauma they have to go through before they pick up, pick up a pen, a book to read. So a lot of times teachers, they have 30 or plus whatever kids in school and then they don't understand what they may not know or can't have don't have time to figure out what's going on with the kids mentally so that's part of what our job is we sit and advocate for the kids we sit and talk to them we have provide um, psychotherapists and stuff like that also to help mediate their issues and the trauma that they are experiencing because of the state of mind of our communities so when we talk about gun violence we don't just talk about the nra we don't just talk about stopping the, the flow of guns in our community because at the end of the day our people will pick up knives because the state of mind is violent. And that's what we have to focus on. Focus on, through the New York City crisis management system, we focus on gun violence from a public health perspective. There is no question that there's a mental condition that we're dealing with in our communities. And that is our work. Because press conference at the press conference, if the resources and the help and the guidance for our, our, our communities are not here, the gun violence is not going to stop. Crimes Mediation Center is an organization that's open to help individuals in the community diffuse conflict. Whether it's family conflict, in-school conflict, um, landlord-tenants issue, that is our main focus. However, we have now expanded into doing a lot more professional development by teaching mediation classes, conflict resolution classes, and running the Rites of Passage program to help individuals become better advocates for themselves dealing with conflict. As a SOS worker, I'm a violence interrupter. A violence interrupter, we canvass the neighborhoods, we talk to people on the street, and we try to encourage them if they're like high-risk individuals that has been locked up or coming out of jail, or we feel like they, um, they carry guns, weapons, so we convince them to come into the mediation center to see if we can try to, you know, see what their goals are. If they want to change their life of living from violence to trying to get a job, get an education. And basically that's what we do. It's a few things that I enjoy doing with SOS. Uh, one of the main things is definitely hitting the streets and talking to these young dudes and helping them change their mindset and get back on track. And another way is we do events, participant events, we do community events, um, talent shows, we do cookouts, we take kids out to, on um, trips and stuff like that, water parks, uh, paintball, so that's the thing I love about that here at SOS, that we could uh, show a different insight to the people. What I like overall about being part of you at SOS is every day you get to build like a closer relationship with the people you're involved with and it kind of opened up your eyes to the change that you could make. I tell my friends that you have to think about what's, gonna, what's going to happen next and how it's going to affect you because every action has a reaction and your reaction might be the worst thing that ever happened to you. I got caught up with guns as a teenager and um, during my teenage years, spending multiple years um, incarcerated as a teenager and as a, um, in my early 20s as a young adult. Once I re-entered my community, I just realized that the community was just getting worse and I felt like I contributed to the mess that was going on in the community. I just wanted to do something different, like 13, 14, 15 year olds shouldn't be running around with guns. They should have a book bag going to school and playing sports and stuff like that and just what I just try to reiterate through my life. Um, people who know me know the life I used to live and they see that I, I'm a walking change agent. Through the grace of God, we have been blessed to have a street named after Benny. Whereas every day when we come home, anytime we come out on the block, we get to see his name. But I don't think I have to tell you 
we will prefer to see Benny. Unfortunately, we no longer have that privilege to do that. But because Benny did so many productive things in society and loved his community in such a way, he gave back. So we thank God every day for this, but I am asking you again, I can't say this enough, please put down the guns. No more taking people lives. We need you guys to stand strong and united as a whole to help one another. And so again, I ask you, please put down the guns. Stop the violence and put the guns down. To stop the violence, we all need to just put the guns down. End the story. Please put the guns down. It's not worth it with all this beef or anything, I. Right? We're living and we're doing this whole education thing to make something out of ourselves, to make history, to prove that we can actually, actually be better than what we are. So I'm gonna just tell y'all this straight up. Put the guns down, for real. That's it, just put the guns down. Put the guns down. Put the guns down. Can you please put the guns down? Put down the guns, let us raise our sons. Please put the guns down. Put the guns down. Put the guns down. The clear message coming from our community right now is to say to each and every one of you that carry illegal handguns, put the guns down. Well, we've heard many voices. We've heard the voices that spoke to our spirit. And we heard some voices that spoke to our intellect. We're asking that as a community of neighbors, as a community of people, that we come together and together we can change the mindset of gun violence. Together, together we can change the mindset of this gun violence. I get it. Shooting is a hobby now. After this track, homies gon' try to rob me now. But is violence the key? Is violence the problem? You solve to cause problems in me. And is it true that you'd rather hold a gun? Is it true? And is it true that you'd rather shoot for fun? Is it true? Get it through your mind, next gun that you hold. Put it down and walk away, cause you could be the one to get laid down. And I ain't trying to be your enemy. And you ain't gotta fit just to be a friend of me. You ain't gotta envy me just cause of my family. Family, we all black. I'm pretty sure that you can finally see. We ain't different. Uh -huh. We show up to school, but we ain't gifted. Uh -huh. Cops shooting us cause we started. Don't get it twisted. Like you heard what happened to that man in the street. We got the same complexion, man. I'm glad it wasn't me. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't you too. And I heard that you was neutral. But out in the street, talking crazy like you cuckoo. That man in the sky, watching over you. I know you wonder why that man. It's uncontrollable, that's only cause he got the power The sweet stuff and the sour I know you gotta hustle for the money by the hour But there's different ways I'm talking different ways to get paid To get paid Yeah, so put the guns down for the kids For the matter who you are They only gon' mimic how we live Put the gun down for respect I don't forget you left I'm tryna do right for the best Put the guns down for the kids No matter who you are who They only gon' mimic how we live Put the gun down for respect Cause there's no one that you left Y'all tryna do right for the best some say, why this always happen to me? I say, why them youngins in the street clapping the heat? They say, why stand when you gon' get put back in your seat? Why young boys smoking lips black as a leaf? How come?